All right, so listen to this. SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft I just gave the International Space Station a little boost. Mm. And it wasn't just any boost. Right. It was the first time uh, that Dragon has ever done this, which is uh, pretty amazing when you think about it. Yeah, that is really interesting. So we're diving into a recent news article about this today. Okay. So let's get right to it. All right, let's go. So what makes this so interesting? Well, what makes this so interesting is how it changes the game for keeping the ISS up and running, you know, running smoothly. Yeah. Think about it this way. NASA already has the Russian progress and Northrop Grumman's Cygnus, you know, mm -hmm. for the same job. Right. Now Dragon's in the mix, too. Uh -huh. And that kind of backup is crucial when you're talking about space. Yeah. Okay. Having options is good in almost any situation, but up in space. Oh, yeah. It's not like they can just call AAA if the ISS starts falling. Right. Right. Exactly. So what's the big deal with this redundancy thing? Well, you hit the nail on the head. The ISS is constantly fighting against Earth's gravity and the drag from our atmosphere. Right. If it doesn't get a boost every now and then, it'll eventually fall back to Earth and burn up. Oh, wow. Having different spacecraft capable of doing those boosts keeps everyone safe right. and buys the ISS more time up there to do its work. So this wasn't just Dragon like showing off. This was actually you know, making sure the ISS stays up there for years to come. Exactly. And don't forget that this was only one part of Dragon's trip. Oh, right. It also delivered over 6,000 pounds of supplies to the station. 6,000 pounds. Yeah. That's like sending a whole grocery store up to space. It's a lot of stuff. Seriously, though. That's a lot of stuff. Yeah. And this was the 31st SpaceX resupply mission. 31st. Which really shows you how important private companies are getting, you know, in space. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't just any delivery run either. Right. Some of the cargo on this mission was pretty groundbreaking. Okay. Stuff that paves the way for new discoveries, you know, mm -hmm. up on the ISS. For example, one shipment was for a new bioprinting experiment. What? They're actually trying to print human tissues in space. Wow. Which could totally change healthcare back here on Earth. Oh, you know, that's what I'm talking about. That's cool. Yeah. We always hear about the ISS as a lab in space. Right. But it's really so much more than that, isn't it? It really is. It's like a testing ground for long duration space flight. Exactly. It's where we learn how to live and work in space for months at a time. Yeah. And it's that knowledge that will help us reach for even bigger goals. Why? Like Artemis sending humans back to the moon. And maybe even Mars someday. Exactly. And what we're seeing with Dragon, this ability to reposition the ISS, could be really important for future space stations. Mm -hmm. Like the Lunar Gateway they're planning to build around the moon right. will need that kind of control to keep it working for those Artemis missions. Yeah. So this Dragon maneuver isn't just about the ISS. Right. It's about the future of space exploration. This is blowing my mind a little. Yeah. It seems like every time we do something incredible in space, mm -hmm. it opens up a ton of new questions and possibilities. That's the beauty of discovery. Mm. It's never ending. Yeah. It just keeps going. Yeah, yeah, it really is amazing. Absolutely. It's like, you know, knocking over that first domino right. and setting off this incredible chain reaction. Yeah. Speaking of pushing boundaries, yeah. I was reading about how this reboost was done using Dragon's Draco thrusters. Hmm. Is there something special about those? Definitely. Okay. The Draco thrusters are a key part of Dragon's propulsion system. Okay. They might be small, mm. but they pack a punch. Right. And give Dragon that really precise control. Right. And maneuverability, oh, which yeah. we saw in action, right? right? This just proved they're not just for docking and undocking. Mm. They can actually move the entire space station. Wow. So they're like those tiny but super strong ants uh -huh. that can lift way more than their own weight. That's a great way to put it. That's some serious power in a small package. It is. And if you remember what we were talking about earlier, that yeah. redundancy thing, wow. having Dragon's Draco thrusters as another option for boosting the station yeah. makes it that much more resilient right. and flexible in the long run. Okay, so we've got Dragon doing this historic reboost, right. delivering tons of supplies, basically being a space superhero. Uh-huh. But what does all this mean for the future of the ISS? Well... It can't stay up there forever, can it? You're right. It can't. Right. Right now, the ISS is supposed to operate until 2030. Okay. But what happens after that is still up in the air. Yeah. One possibility is handing over its operations to commercial companies, mm. which kind of ties into what we're seeing with SpaceX, right. making on more responsibility. So instead of governments running the show, yeah. the ISS could become a commercial space station. 
It's possible. With private companies calling the shots. Yeah. That's a huge change. It would be a major shift. Yeah. And it brings up all sorts of questions. Right. About how international cooperation and competition yeah. will play out in space in the future. Right. Because if private companies are the ones maintaining and running the station, uh -huh. what happens to international partnerships? Right. Will we see more countries working together in space? Yeah. Or will it become more competitive? That's the question. It feels like the Wild West out there. It's true. Yeah. The landscape of space exploration is changing fast. Right. And this dragon reboost might be a sign of what's to come. Yeah. If private companies are stepping up to handle crucial tasks like station maintenance, right. what does that mean for government agencies like NASA? Right. How will international collaborations need to adapt yeah. to this new reality? Those are some big questions. They are. And I don't think they're easy answers. No. But that's what makes this deep dive so interesting. Exactly. We're seeing history being mowed right now. Mm -hmm. And it's impossible to know for sure what the future holds. And that's what's so exciting about it. Yeah. Exploration is about pushing boundaries, right? taking risks, and heading into the unknown. Uh -huh. This dragon reboost is just one small step in this grand adventure. Mm. And it'll be fascinating to see what happens next. It really is a thrilling time to be following all things space. Mm. Okay, so let's recap what we've learned today. SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft pulled off something pretty incredible, boosting the ISS orbit for the first time ever. Yeah, and as we've been talking about, this isn't just a cool technological feat. It has real implications for the future of the ISS. It really highlights the growing role of private companies in space. Right. And raises some thought-provoking questions about how international collaboration will work in this new era of space exploration. Right, and it makes you wonder what happens if or when private companies are the ones in charge of the ISS. Will we see competing space stations from different companies? It's possible. Will the kind of research they prioritize change? There are so many possibilities. Mm. Exactly. And that leads to another question worth considering. If a private company owned the ISS, who gets to go? Yeah. Would it just be astronauts from the company's country? Right. Would there be some sort of international agreement? It really makes you think about how access to space might evolve. It's like we're standing on the edge of a whole new frontier. It's exciting but there are definitely challenges ahead. Well, a huge thank you to you for guiding us through this deep dive into the Dragon Reboost and what it all means for the future of space. And thank you to you, our listener, for joining us on this exciting adventure. If this has piqued your interest, mm -hmm. we encourage you to explore more about the ever-evolving world of space. Who knows, maybe you'll be part of the next giant leap for humankind. Until next time, keep looking up. <laughs>